Hello everyone and welcome to The Wrap, brought to you by Michigan Medicine Headlines. I'm Dan Elman with the Department of Communication. And I'm Batman to Dan's Robin, Hunter Mitchell. Today we're going to be honoring Sepsis Awareness Month by taking a closer look at the condition and what team members at Michigan Medicine can do to stop sepsis before it harms patients. Now before we get into that, be sure you take some time to get caught up on any episode of The Wrap you may have missed. You can find the shows on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or any other podcast hosting platform. Video versions of each episode are also published on the Michigan Medicine YouTube channel and as part of the headlines we can review. All right, on that note, let's bring in Jesse King and Winnie Wood, two members of the team at Michigan Medicine that is devoted to helping colleagues spot sepsis and stop sepsis as quickly as possible. Jesse and Winnie, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Now, first, can you explain in, in broad terms what sepsis actually is and how it affects patients? Yes. So sepsis in a simple term is when it's the body's extreme response to infection. You'll have uh, either a bacterial infection. It could also be a viral infection like COVID or influenza. And that's where it all begins. And the body decides to attack that. And you have this extreme response to it. I was going to say, it's, uh, I always, I explain it to my medical students as it's an exaggeration of the response to infection that you get locally. So um, if you cut your arm and you get a little localized infection, the blood vessels locally dilate, they become leaky um, in order to uh, allow the white blood cells to come in and fight the infection. So I think of sepsis or, or even severe sepsis septic shock as this occurring all over the body. So you're getting vasodilation all over the body, inflammatory markers every, or inflammatory cytokines flying around. Um, and this leads to uh, sort of, as when you said, an exaggerated response to this infection. Um, ultimately, this can lead to um, organ dysfunction and death. Wow. So Jesse, I think you kind of touched on this, but maybe if you could expand on this, why is it so essential that sepsis is spotted as early as possible? Um, so I think the challenge with sepsis is that there's no one test for sepsis. Um, so unlike a heart attack or a stroke, um, I can't do a sim one or two different tests that will, that will tell me the patient is septic. Um, so it's really, really crucial to have a high, high suspicion um, for infection and for sepsis. Um, and the reason being is that time is of the essence. Um, for every hour that appropriate antibiotics are delayed, uh, that increases your mortality risk by about 8%. Um, and so the sooner uh, we intervene with these abnormal uh, inflammatory cascades, uh, the better the patient will do and the more successful we'll be in treating that patient. So intervening, you know, what are some of those symptoms or signs that faculty and staff can look for in patients in order to intervene and make sure that, you know, sepsis is treated as quickly as possible? Well, some of the things that we look for are altered mental status or confusion, um, a fast respiratory rate, or people having sometimes shortness of breath, also decreased urine output. Um, we also look for, especially with children, all of a sudden they're very lethargic because it can affect adults and children. So it's everyone is at risk for sepsis. So what can team members do if they suspect sepsis in one of their patients? Well, one of the things we ask nurses to do is if they suspect sepsis, immediately notify the healthcare provider. And that's whether it's a pediatric team or an adult team, because time of a, is of essence. Like Jesse said, we need to interact to intervene very quickly. That could be with fluids, antibiotics. There's also labs and other tests that we run, but we want to intervene as soon as possible. Now, when I was preparing, you know, for, for this interview and also for the Sepsis Awareness Month story that recently ran in headlines, I came across some pretty shocking data about sepsis and, and the fact that it's the leading cause of death in U.S. hospitals. Are there any other sort of surprising facts out there? And what else do you think is important for our listeners to know about sepsis? I have a, I have a whole list of uh, <laughs> fascinating sepsis facts. Um, so you talk about mortality in the United States. Um, what that works out to be is, is someone dies of sepsis every two minutes. Um, and about 80% of those are actually preventable um, by, by really recognizing and treating as soon as possible. 
Um, at U of M or at Michigan Medicine, it's the most common um, common discharge diagnosis. And um, it also has the highest, as a group or as a population, has the highest readmission rate. Uh, and so there's a lot of associated um, comorbidities and, and um, problems that patients have, even if they survive their sepsis event. Um, so there's uh, something known as post-sepsis syndrome, and it's estimated that um, somewhere between 60 and 70% of patients uh, who survive their sepsis event uh, have some uh, of the symptoms of post-sepsis syndrome. Um, and 30 to 40% of our older adults um, never get back to their pre-sepsis uh, functional status. And these things, like Jesse said, um, that's important about our post-sepsis syndrome, things like insomnia, um, chronic pain, um, organ dysfunction, and long-term organ dysfunction are also things that are seen. And our readmission rates, those patients, especially if they ended up in the ICU and our older patients, are readmitted more frequently. So that's part of also one of the things why we want to intervene quickly, catch it early, and treat it. I was going to say the, the psychological aspects also are, um, are, uh, can be pretty devastating. I think post-sepsis patients um, not only just have a shortened life expectancy in general, um, but they have up to a 40% increased uh, risk of suicide. Thank you so much, Jesse and Winnie, for providing this information during Sepsis Awareness Month. If you want to learn more about sepsis and what you can do to prevent it, go to mmheadlines.org. That's mmheadlines.org. All right. Now, Winnie's work isn't quite done yet. Winnie, you drew the short straw and will be participating in the lightning round where we ask you four quick fire questions. Are you ready to go? I'm ready. All right. The first question is, if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would it be? Portugal. You were very quick and had that answer ready. Uh, we've already mentioned that September is Sepsis Awareness Month. Now, it's totally unrelated, but it's also Classical Music Month. What is your favorite kind of music to listen to? Um, I actually like classical music. Do you have a favorite so, composer? Uh, I would say probably Beethoven. I like a lot of his. Nice. I played piano when I was younger. Awesome. Oh, nice. All right. Well, so do you have any unique hobbies that your coworkers may not know about? Well, since COVID, I've picked up putting puzzles together. <laughs> <laughs> so have I. It's amazing. It is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, minimum 1,500 pieces. Maximum so far has been 3,000 pieces. But wow. Impressive. I've been sticking <laughs> with 1,000 <the> pieces. <laughs> It's all good. I won't judge. I won't judge. All right. What are you most looking forward to doing this fall? Well, probably getting together with a couple of uh, family members. We've all been vaccinated. Everyone, uh, we haven't really seen each other in person. Last year, we did Thanksgiving uh, via Zoom. So this year, one of my cousins, we're going to try it. The two of us get together. Nice. Well, that's it. Well done, Winnie. Thank you so much for being here and sharing your knowledge about sepsis. Uh, once again, if you want to learn more about sepsis, go to mmheadlines.org. That's mmheadlines.org. And while you're there, you could check out the other featured stories from this abbreviated week, which included the story of two patients who have visited Mich Michigan Medicine 35 times. The Geltners go on to share their recommendations for how you can provide an exceptional patient experience. Find that story and much more at mmheadlines.org. All right, Dan. Now, last week, of course, college football season kicked off and the NFL follows this upcoming weekend. Um, I know you're a big sports nut. Can you tell me what is your favorite sport and is there one single sporting event you've been to that stands out? Yeah. So, I mean, I love college football. That's uh, it's near the top, but actually I, I like baseball more. Um, and so just always been my whole life a diehard Tigers fan. Um, so the number one sporting event that stands out for me that I've been to, um, I actually got to go to one of the games in the World Series back in 2006 when the Tigers were hosting the Cardinals. And it happened to be the only game of the World Series that they won. So I like to think of myself as the good luck charm. They lost the four games I had to watch on TV. They won the one game I went to. So any World Series game moving forward, I feel like I should get free tickets to 
Comerica Park. So I'm just putting that out there. And if anyone who works with the Tigers is listening, I'm available for free tickets to any potential World Series games. Now, how about you? Are you into sports or attending sporting events? Well, so, uh, yeah, I like it. Um, I haven't been to a whole lot. Uh, Last weekend was my first Michigan game ever, and I went with you. And so thank you again. But uh, it was (laughs) a great game, and they won too. So you are a good luck charm, I think. But, uh, right, right. Well, no, see, if, and if they had lost, you wouldn't be invited back to see that. <laughs> that would be, exactly. Um, yep. But yeah, no, I, I'm really, I like college football. My brothers are super into MLS, though. So that's kind of something like this year I want to get more into soccer. And, nice. uh, and, and my father-in-law is into the Tigers baseball and all that stuff. So I, I have lots of uh, games to go to still. But yeah. I, yes, you do. Yes. Outstanding. All right. Well, it's time for the weekly trivia contest. Last week, we asked listeners. The ongoing food drive at NCRC runs through which date? The answer is September 26th. You still have plenty of time to give some food or funds to benefit food gatherers. Brian Wu, you've done it again, sending in the correct answer. Congratulations, Brian. Now for this week's question, here's Hunter. This week's question is, how many patients develop sepsis in the U.S. each year? Once again, how many patients develop sepsis in the U.S. each year? You can find that answer in this week's headline story. And once you know it, send it to headlines at med.umich.edu for the chance to win a prize. That's all the time we have for this week. Winnie and Jesse, thank you so much for joining us. And thanks, as always, to all of our listeners and viewers for everything you do for patients, families, and each other. We'll see you next week.